Good morning. Good morning, good morning. It's Pastor Callie this morning. It's a beautiful Monday morning. The day after Easter. Resurrection Sunday. Jesus is alive. What an honor it is to pray with you this morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. An honor to pray with you this morning. We're starting another beautiful week right after Resurrection Weekend. Jesus is alive and well. He's been alive and well a long time. We just celebrate it once a year. Thank you, Lord, that you're alive. Thank you, Lord, that you are alive. You came out of that grave. You rose again. And because you got up out of that grave, when we get saved and filled with your spirit and baptized, we get up out of our grave. We get up out of our grave. What a, what a beautiful day it is to pray. I love you, ladies. Thank you for coming on this morning. I want y'all to share the broadcast. Let's have a week this week where we invite lots of people to pray with us. Look, I understand. I understand humanity. I'm 61 years old, so I understand humanity, and I know that when things are tough and and hard, people pray more when they're facing uncertainty, when they're facing trauma or sickness or, you know, whatever, loss, loss of anything. A lot of times people will begin to pray at those trying times. And I'm, you know, I'm not against that. Whenever people will pray, God's there to respond to that. But what a blessing it is when we pray every day because we're in love with Jesus and because we're in relationship with him and because he died for us and we've never forgotten what he did for us on the cross. What an honor it is to spend time with him every day because I can't forget what he did for me. I can't live a day without thinking of the goodness of the Lord in my life and the love he gave and the, the love he gave uh, for me through his own son. Uh, he sacrificed his own son so that I could be free, so that I could be saved, so that I could be healed, delivered, set free. I've never gotten over that. And I pray you never get over it either. And so I'm so thankful that you're here praying this morning. But I want to encourage you this week, invite some ladies to pray with us. Just pick up the phone and say, pray with us. We pray every morning, Monday through Friday. We pray for America. We pray for revival in this nation. We pray for our school systems. We pray for the culture in America. We pray for the world. We pray for Israel. We pray for our families. We pray for our husbands. We pray for ourselves. And we just worship God. Sometimes we just worship the Lord. Invite, invite your friends to pray with us. It will change their life. Ask them for a 90-day or a 120-day commitment to pray with us every morning. Maybe they need to catch us on replay. Uh, instead of replay, it's replay. Catch us on replay. If it's too, if, if it's too early where they're at, well, when, whenever they get up, they can catch us on replay and just pray with us when they get up and let us know they're on replay and w what a blessing it is. So, Lord, I just thank you for the ladies that are coming on this morning. I thank you for their faithfulness. I thank you for their love for you. I thank you for, for their love for mankind. I thank you, God, that they, they love to spend time in your presence. I thank you, God, that you're teaching them the power, the power of prayer. You're teaching them the effectual, fervent prayer, how to pray effectively every day and see your hand move in our lives in such a profound way. Lord, I thank you for 147 women that are faithful to come on and spend time with you every day. I thank you, God, for women that love your word. I thank you, Lord, for women that love your presence. I thank you, Lord, for women that love to spend time with you and know you in the intimate, uh, in the intimate place, in the secret place of prayer. God, when, when women and men and your children get a revelation of the power of communing with you, there will never be a devil in hell stop them. The power of communing with the Father, the power 
of spending time with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And Lord, we just ask you to speak to us today about what's on your heart. What is on your heart today, Lord? There's a lot of things I can pray for. There's a lot of things I can ask you for. There's a lot of things. But God, I want to talk about what's on your heart today. I want to pray your will, your purpose, your plan today. I love you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your incredible love for us. We thank you, Lord, that you died on a cross. We thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every day. We thank you, Lord, that you care enough about us that you've moved heaven and earth so that we could be saved, so that we could have an opportunity to know you and to return back to you and to be redeemed. We thank you for that redemption today. We thank you for the stripes that were laid on your back, Lord. We, we, you didn't deserve it. We deserved it. But we thank you, God, that you took the stripes so that we could be healed and saved and set free. We thank you for your word, Lord, because we learn and know about your character when we read your word. We, we get to know who you are. We get to know the fullness of your character and the fullness of everything that you are to us and what a good, good father you are. And we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that your mercies are new and you've given us chance after chance to serve you. And even when we didn't, we didn't handle things right, God, you were so faithful to us that we honor you and we thank you for your love today. We thank you for the opportunity to spend time with you every morning and you show up, you show up and you're, and you're waiting for us to call upon your name and spend time in your presence and you're you're so faithful to show up and to speak to us and to love us in the fullness of your spirit. I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We thank you for this great nation. We thank you, God, that you're moving in power and in might in this nation. We thank you, Lord, that you're saving the lost. And God, you're sending forth laborers into the field and I thank you right now for 177 women praying right now. I thank you for women praying all across America. I thank you for women inviting. Ladies, I want you to take the time right now and go on and tell me where you're praying from. Tell me where you're praying from. And then put in a prayer request this morning. Because when you type that out, first and foremost, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords sees that prayer. And then that gives other women across the nation an opportunity to pray with you. So tell us where you are and tell us what you're praying for this morning. What you need this morning. What you need this morning. So Lord, I just, I just love you so much. I can't even imagine my life without you. I can't imagine having to, to navigate this life without your power, without your presence without your direction, without your love, without your kindness, without your wisdom, without the Spirit of God leading and guiding me in all that I do. I wouldn't want to live one minute without you in this world, Lord. And I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your love. I pray for every, every lady on this broadcast. I pray for every lady on this broadcast, everyone that's represented. There's 193 of you right now, and I just declare the blessing of God over you. I declare the wisdom of God over you. I declare the bounty of God over you. I declare health over you, wealth over you, wisdom, revelation. I declare that you'll have eyes to see and ears to hear and that your heart will be so tender toward the Lord that your heart will be so tender toward the Lord. And God, I just thank you for women that pray every morning that have tender hearts toward the Lord. They have tender hearts toward mankind. They have tender hearts toward their family, their husbands, their children, their grandchildren, that we are tender hearted. We're wise and tender hearted. We live in a hard world, ladies, but we are not to become hard. We live in a hard world. We live in a world that is not, that is not Christ-like, but that is not our path. Our path is a way of holiness and righteousness, and love, and mercy. I thank you, Lord, for 195 women 
197 women that are praying and seeking your face. I thank you, Lord, for women that will pray every morning until you move in power and might. And they are faithful to show up and spend time in your presence. I thank you. I want you ladies to put your state that you live in on the broadcast. I'm going to go back through and look at the states and pray for the states. If you want to put your city and state, put it there. Lord, I just pray that every city and every state that is represented on this prayer cast, God, that you would redeem that city, that county, and that state. Make it a glory city. I'm asking you, Lord, to move in power and might in our nation. God, to change the narrative of the enemy. The enemy wants to destroy this great nation. The enemy wants us to take us out before our time. But, Lord, I ask you to change the narrative. Just like Jonah preached and Nineveh repented. Lord, I'm asking you for a nation that will repent. I'm asking you for a nation that will draw nigh to you. I'm asking you for a nation that will seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. God, we ask you to have mercy on this nation. We ask you, God, to save us, to cleanse us, to purify us, to draw us nigh. We ask you to wake us up. Wake up our children and grandchildren. Wake up our children and grandchildren. God, give them a love for the lost. God, give them a love for you. God, ta God take the desire for the world out of their heart. Take it out. God, I just, I just see by the faith, by faith, I see God's hand reaching into your children's hearts and taking the desire for the world completely out and putting in a desire for, for righteousness and holiness and to spend time with the presence of God, in the presence of God, and to do what God has called them to do. Lord, take selfish motives and ambitions out of our lives. Take it out. Clean up the church. Clean up the church. Clean up the church, Lord. Clean up the fivefold ministry. Clean up the church of the living God. Clean us up. Cleanse us, Lord. Touch our tongues with coals from heaven. From the our mouth, Lord, with the fiery coals of heaven. Wash us, cleanse us, purify us. Let us know you in power and spirit and truth. Let us be women that will pray and fast and seek your face until we see a move of God in our homes, in our lives, in our marriages, in our children, in our churches, in our businesses. In, every, in our schools, in every area, in our, in our communities. God, God, touch us until we begin to see. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for 210 women praying. I thank you, Lord, for over 200 women seeking your face today. I thank you, Lord, God, that you are drawing women from the north, south, east, and west to this prayer cast, to this prayer cast every day that will pray with us for America, that will pray with us for our homes, that will pray with us for our husbands, that will pray with us for our children and grandchildren. Right now, ladies, I want you to just raise your hands and pray for your husbands. Lord, we pray for all of our husbands. We pray, God, that you touch them. We pray, God, that you speak to them in the middle of the night. We pray, God, that you give them a desire to spend time in your presence and to sell out to you. Lord, I thank you for my husband that loves you so much. And I pray, God, for every woman on this broadcast, Lord, that their husbands would be on fire for you that their husbands would be sold out to your kingdom, that their husbands would be prayer warriors, would be men of prayer, men of prayer, men that love God, men that are sold out to the kingdom of God, men that live what they preach and that lead their families in prayer and lead their families in righteousness and pray for their wives and their children. We ask you for a revival in our husbands, Lord. I'm so thankful for my husband. And Lord, I ask you to give every one of these women 
a husband that's on fire for God. Let their husbands know you in power and in truth, Lord. Let them know you in intimacy, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray for every one of these women and all their children. I pray, God, that all their children would be on fire for you, Lord. All their children would be saved and healed and delivered. And that the children, God, would not only have intimacy with you, but would go back to church and be faithful to the house of God and take their children and take their grandchildren and be faithful to the things of God. Ladies, God is, God is calling us. Now is not a time to slack up or back down. But now we must be more diligent, more faithful than we've ever been. God, I break every spirit of passivity. I break every spirit. Maybe, maybe you know what? I don't think that the church at large is 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 uh, struggling because they want to go rob a bank or they want to go, you know, do something sinful. I think the church at large is struggling because of passivity. I think the church at large is struggling because everybody's passive and just doesn't care enough. And God, I ask you to put a burning desire in these women to be everything you've called them to be, to stand for righteousness and holiness and purity. I thank you, Lord, that you are breaking the spirit of passivity over us and you are causing us to just seek you in a, with fervent hearts, with fervent hearts, with hot, fiery hearts of passion for you, God. Awaken your church. Awaken your church. Awaken the church. Awaken the American church. Awaken the church across the world. I pray, God, for these Her Voice events in uh, Phoenix and Dallas and in Beaumont. Actually, Port Natchez, we're going to be at Donnie and Jessica's church here right around, not right down the street. And I want to encourage you to get your tickets. I also want to encourage you to get your tickets to the National Gathering. It is going to be life-changing, life-changing. You want to be there. God is moving in power and might, and you want to be there. I also want to invite you to our worship gathering here in June. It is the 9th through the 11th. It will be life-changing. It's not just for worship ministry. It is for the worshipers. It is for anybody that loves Jesus. You will be, you, everybody that comes the last two or three years, have they come back. They say it's life-changing and you need to be here. I will also put that up as well. So Her Voice events, we've got one in Phoenix at the end of the month. In May, we've got two, one in uh, Dallas, one in uh, the Beaumont Triangle area. And then, of course, in June, we've got a worship conference here. And then July is our national gathering with Her Voice. So, ladies, make sure you get your tickets. Get here. Um, you will, Just do what you can do to get there in July. I'm telling you, God is going to move in power and might. We're going to see some unbelievable uh, miracles, signs, and wonders. Many lives will be changed. We love you. We're so excited about what God is doing in America. We're so excited about what God is doing in the church of the living God. The church of the living God is awakening. It is awakening. You need to ask the Lord to show you the difference between talent and anointing. I was thinking about this this morning. You need to ask God to show you the difference between talent and anointing. Because the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, and the, and the more things become uh, more tumultuous in our, in our nation. We're headed for some things. We're headed for some things. And I'm not a negative person. I'm a glass half full girl, but I'm telling you, we're headed for some things. But you're going to need to be able to recognize the difference between a talented person and an anointing per anointed person. A, a talented uh a church and an anointed church. A talented pastor, an anointed pastor. Now, you can be talented and anointed. You can be talented and anointed. You can be a, a church full of talents and be very anointed. You can be a, a pastor full of talents and very anointed. But without the anointing, the anointing is what breaks the yoke. 
We don't need uh, we don't need the churches to be filled with motivational speakers. We don't need that. There's plenty of motivational speakers out there. You can hire you a motivational speaker. You can go. There's nothing wrong with that. But we don't need the church filled with them. We need the church filled with anointed men and women of God preaching the gospel. That instead of spending, you know, five hours combing their hair and buying a, the latest and greatest new Louis Vuitton, and I'm not against a Louis Vuitton, I have one. But if if the only thing the pastors do is become more famous and become celebrities and they don't have anointing, that isn't worth two cents to you. It's not worth two cents. If you're in a church that there's no anointing, you need to turn around and run out of there as fast as you can run. I mean run out as fast as you can run. You need to be in a church where the pastor gets up with a fresh word from God because they pray, because they fast, because they love the Lord, because they they care for all kinds of people, uh, the down and out, the middle and out, the up and out. They, they, it's not about they're they're not they're not trying to build kingdoms of men, but they're they're called to build the kingdom of God. You got to know the difference between anointing and talent. There's a lot of charismatic people that don't have one ounce of anointing, one ounce of just of of a prayer life. And you better be able to know the difference, and the Holy Spirit will tell you the difference. The Holy Spirit will show you. Lord, we want to be able to know the difference between talented individuals and anointed individuals. And God, I'm asking you to fill our churches with anointed pastors. We're asking you to fill our worship teams. And God help, if you're hiring a bunch of worship people to come in, because you want it to sound good, but that you don't know a thing about them. They could be out Sunday, uh, Saturday fornicating and on your platform Sunday morning playing worship. Shame on you, pastors. Shame on you. Repent. Repent. You can find talented musicians that love Jesus that love Jesus and that are serving God. And there's nothing wrong with paying your musicians. I have, we pay ours. But I know where they're all, uh, where they're all at on Saturday. And if they're, if they're living uh, unholy, it won't be long and Jesus will tell us. We don't need to just be so talented oriented that we throw away holiness. And so I'm just encouraging you ladies to, to make sure that you're in churches. You need to ask Holy Spirit to send you to a church that's on fire for God and where the pastors and the, and the staff have, have a, a, a prayer life. And they're not just building a business or a brand. And I'm not, and there's an element, there's a business element to church. And there's a, you got to brand things for the sake of branding. I understand that. I'm not an idiot. But if that's all you do and there's no prayer life to back up the ministry, it's not a ministry. Do you understand me? If there's not, if there's not people that are sold out to the kingdom of God and sold out to Jesus, you have just found an enterprise that you've become a part of. And, and it's not, it's not, don't mean nothing. It's worthless. And so, God, I'm asking you to forgive us, forgive the church for caring more about money, caring more about prestige, caring more about popularity, caring more about building their own kingdom. I'm asking you to forgive the church, forgive us. God, give us a heart for the lowly, for the down and out. 
for the busted and disgusted. Give us a heart for your word. Give us a heart for prayer. Give us a heart for holiness. Give us a heart to lay down our own desires and to pick up our cross and follow you. Give us a heart. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive the church. Let the church, let the real church arise. Let a praying church arise. Let, a, let, let men and women of God that, that love your word more than we love anything else, that love your presence more than we love and desire anything else. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Wash us, cleanse us, purge us. Wash us, cleanse us, purge us. Lord, I just thank you. I just thank you. It, it's, it's disturbing to me, church. It's disturbing to me, ladies. When I hear the things that go on in, in pulpits and in churches across America, it's disturbing to me. I, I, I'm sorry. I, it's disturbing to me. I know, listen, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. But there, there's a, you know what, a mistake you know, you're losing your temper or saying something to your spouse a little curt or, um, you know, I don't know. That's one thing. But standing in a pulpit on Sunday, preaching the gospel or leading worship, when 10 minutes before you got there, you were doing something nasty, God help us. God help us. And no fear of God. No fear of God. And so, Lord, I'm asking you to wash us. Wash the church. Have mercy. Your mercies are new every morning. God, let repentance, let repentance flow through the church of God like a mighty river. Let repentance flow through the church of God like a mighty river. Let a desire for holiness and righteousness Grip the church of the living God. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I ask you, God, to wash us and forgive us. Forgive us, forgive us. We can stand in the gap for the church. Listen, I've done my share of things in my life that I'm not happy with. Okay, I'm, Pastor Kelly's not been perfect, nor have you. And nor, nor am I saying we have to be perfect. But as a minister of the gospel... You have a responsibility to yourself and to God and to God's people to not be getting on platforms and living a double life. If you're going to be a sinner, get off the platform. Get off the platform. Quit telling people how to live for God if you're behind closed doors living like the devil. Stop it. Just stop it. And repent and let God fix things. Same thing goes in church. If you're teaching Sunday school classes and doing things and you're living a double life, stop it. Just repent. Get yourself straight and get back involved when you're when you're living right. When you're doing right. Have some morals about you. Love God enough not to desecrate his house. Love God enough. When Pastor Kelly backslid in my 30s, I came off all the platforms. I quit. I quit. Get, I, you, didn't, you wouldn't find me on a platform anywhere. Nobody had to set me down. I set myself down. Nobody had to come and say, you can't, you can't sing or you can't... Uh, uh, prophesy or you can't do any you know, nobody had nobody had to come tell me that i loved god enough and had enough respect for god i set myself down i said i'm not going to get up there and and be and and appear to be one thing when really i'm something else and that's what we must now am i saying every little mistake you make you run and you quit. No, I'm not. You you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a lifestyle of sin. 
I'm talking about a lifestyle of sin. I'm talking about making decisions to live a certain way. So, Lord, I just thank you that you are setting the church of the living God on fire with the Holy Ghost. That righteousness and purity is arising. And there's a sanctification that's happening in your church of the living God that is beyond anything we've ever seen. I thank you, Lord, that your church is being sanctified. And I thank you, Lord, that the church is awakening to prayer and holiness. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive the pulpits in America that have lived one way Monday through Saturday and, and presented something different on Sunday. Forgive the worship leaders. Forgive the fivefold ministry that have lived one way and then presented something else when we're in the pulpits. God, forgive us. Wash us. Cleanse us. Forgive the Christians. Forgive the Christians, my brothers and sisters that have lived, compartmentalized their lives and lived one way on Sunday and a different way Monday through Saturday. God, it is your will that our walk with you and our intimacy with you and our a life with you permeates our whole life. It permeates our whole life. That our whole life is permeated with our love for you and our desire for you. And we thank you, God, that you're awakening us to a surrendered life, a surrendered, holy life, a surrendered life in the name of Jesus. I love you so much. I pray you have a wonderful day. I'm going to ask my husband to come and lead us in communion. Be blessed, and we will see you tomorrow. God bless. All right, get your cup and your cracker. As Jesus said, we're going to do this to remember his death before he comes, but also because when he said this, at the time he was saying this, he was doing the Last Supper. We're also going to remember his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension. It's all part of the gospel. Uh, if he just stayed in the grave, that would have been a defeated gospel. But because he ascended, he proved that he was who he said he was. Because he was resurrected and ascended. So, Lord, we thank you for the whole thing. Not just your death, not just that you took our sins, but you uh, and covered us with your righteousness, but you ascended to the right hand of the Father to ever live and intercede for us. And then you said we can come with you to the right hand, your right hand, according to Ephesians, which sit together with you in heavenly places. So, Lord, we just thank you for that today. We thank you for the awful price it took. It's an extreme price that you paid, extravagant extravagantly high but you were passionately in love with us and it was worth the price so Lord we thank you for that today we take the bread as your body we receive all the healing that all the wounds and stripes paid for we receive healing today we declare your healing life over us we declare your blood washes us and cleanses us from all sin and makes us right with God today there's an exchange of our unrighteousness for his righteousness. And when we do sin, we come, 1 John 1, 9, if we, if we do sin, we confess our sin, we repent of our sin, and we make it right. And the blood of Jesus continually washes over us. So it's a continual thing. I want to give you a thought before we go, for those of you who are still on. And that is the word life. If you want to see the word life, it's all in the Bible. Romans 8, John 10, 10. Um, it says that if that same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwells in you, it will also quicken or give life to your mortal bodies. That is your flesh. This body needs the life of God in it. So if so some of the prayers to pray, not just for healing, but for the life of God in your body, 
You just declare the resurrection life of God is in me and, and overcomes all weakness and sickness and rejuvenates every cell and every organ of my body by the life of Jesus Christ, the resurrection life. That same life that raised him from the dead also is in our mortal body, Romans 8 and 11. John 10, 10, I have come that you might have life and that more abundantly. It's the God kind of life. And it includes the life energy of God. It includes the, the life union with God. But he said, I've come that you might have a life more abundantly. Then John 11, um, Lazarus has died. Martha is crying. Jesus comes and she says, if you would have been here, he would not have died, <clears throat> which was correct in her assumption because he was life. He says, you know what? I'm here now and I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall never die. So will we die? Yes, our bodies will, but not our spirits. Once we come to reconnect with God, we are eternal with Jesus. We are permanently connected. So Lord, we thank you for that. So we see there's plenty of scriptures here. In Ephesians, I wanted to turn to that scripture while I was talking about sitting together with him. Um, it says uh, in, verse chapter, in Ephesians 2, and you were made alive and you, he made alive, who was dead in trespasses and sins. Verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in sins and trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. We've been saved. And he raised us up together and sat us and made us to sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And then Romans 6 tells us that we were buried with him, we were raised with him. And he keeps saying the same thing over and over in different ways. We were dead, now we're alive. And his life is in us. So Lord, we just thank you for your life, that we had this life union with you, and we get to enjoy the agape love of God and the life of God. You've come that we might have life, not just forgiveness of sins, not just barely making it, but to have the life of God, the abundant life that you have, the overcoming the world kind of life that we're, we walk in your peace, in your love, no matter what's going on around us. And we stay connected with you in life union with you. Lord, we just thank you. I like the way that the Passion Translation says life union. So Lord, we just thank you for life, the abundant life, the life of God. It's an eternal life. It's a never-ending fire that never stops burning in our hearts. So we just thank you. We carry that life with us. And as the mature sons and daughters of God, we are to give out that life. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. So he didn't just come to give eternal forgiveness, but eternal life. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for that. Bless y'all. Thanks for praying with us this morning. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing.